drunken sailor, what shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? Well, I in the morning. Okay, can we go now? I wanna open my beer. Hello not and yet, welcome yet. to the God damn it, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> that was her. She did it this time. It wasn't me. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Game Brew Podcast, episode 013 on September 10th, 2017. I am your host, Ian Richard, and I'm here this week with Chris Wrights. Hi. Dan Rotz. Seriously, that guy sucks. <laughs> Will Shell. Yeah. And special guest, Christine Vecchione. Welcome, Christine. Hello. Yay! Hi. Welcome. Hi. <laughs> yeah. Today, uh, we'll be talking about what we've been up to this past week, and we'll talk about video game characters that were pirates in another life, and we'll discuss games that stole core concepts from previous titles. But first, it's time for a beer. Oh god, yeah. Chris, what are we drinking this week? This is the Anchor Steam Beer. The the terminology for steam beer has gone through a couple different versions. Like back in California like hundreds of years ago or a hundred years ago, I think. They couldn't keep beer cold. And so when they brewed it, they had a certain method and it let off a bunch of steam and that's how they came with steam beer. Now this is a modern steam beer, also known as a California common beer. And it's modeled after Anchor Steam, who owned the trademark. Nice. Hmm. Cool. Uh, so this is a California brewery. Yes. And another fun fact is that Anchor is one of the first mi- modern microbreweries. So they were the first to have kind of a, nice. a fleet of, of different styles of beer, like an IPA and a stout. I, I really like this. No offense given, given present company, but what comes to mind when I drink this is just like, this is a man's beer. Like it just reminds, it reminds me of my dad and my grandfather. And I mean, what this about is what me? it reminds me of. My mom never drank beer, so it doesn't. I don't feel included. <laughs> wow, well, I think it's delicious. It's really offensive, man. Well, it's not a frilly beer. It's not like it's. Not going for any fruit flavors. It's just, it's a beer, you know? I'm not a frilly person. Your sweater begs to differ. Well, listen, I, I wasn't talking about you. I was talking about the beer. <laughs> so calm down. Yeah, the beer's the beer for me on my tongue is kind of somewhere between a brown and a red. Like, it's sort of got that roundness that a brown has, but a little bit of the bite that a red has. Yeah, I mean, uh, my overall impression of, of this beer is, is based on, like, the smoothness and the taste of it and, and kind of the... I don't want to say texture. That's that's not really the right word for a liquid, but I'm going to use texture. Is that California knows how to party? <laughs> California. It's a good transition beer. What do you mean transition? I mean transition beer. Like I like to drink darker beers when it starts to get cooler, and it's not exactly really cold right now here in Pennsylvania. But I'm kind of leaving those lighter beers, fruitier beers, and going into something a little bit more rounder. I see. Yeah. So it's like a, a transition into the next season. Yeah. Without going full pumpkin, because I just I'm not going to do that. Oh, you don't. You don't. <laughs> you you never, don't ever go full pumpkin. Never, never, never go, full, go pumpkin. full pumpkin. I was going so hard <laughs> against pumpkin. I'm probably going to get some hate for this, but like fucking everything doesn't need to taste like pumpkins. I'm ready for Keystone Light pumpkin. Uh. <laughs> Keystone Light. Have pumpkin. fun with that. <laughs> Okay, so we're going to talk about what we played this week, and I'd like to start with Christine. Christine is visiting with us today, and Christine is a good friend of the Game Brew. In fact, she's the one who designed our logo, yeah. um, which is awesome. If you haven't seen it yet, I don't know how you could have not seen it without <laughs> listening to the podcast. So you you might you might just be blind, which is okay, and that's fine. I hope you still enjoy video games. <laughs> and also us. Wait. And beer. <laughs> well, you could enjoy beer and be blind. Yeah, that's what I'm that's saying. True. I hope you enjoy all those things. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, Video games so, might be hard. <laughs> Christine is great. She's visiting with us in the podcast today. I want to start with her. Christine, what have you been playing this week? So this week I've transitioned from playing, which I know everybody loves, um, Stardew Valley. Yeah. <laughs> I've kind of distanced myself from it successfully, which is great. Big you weaned yourself off. Mm. Yeah. I like her. Uh, <laughs> I like her. <laughs> and instead I've been staying up until probably Four in the morning playing Civ. Uh, nice. Just, Civ six. Yeah, Civ okay. six. I just I I decided to dive in, and it is actually really good. I it, was surprised. Were you a big Civ five person? Yeah, 
it's sort of like a game that I'll get into for a couple months, really hardcore, and then just never play again. And then maybe it'll come out once or twice after that. But it looks really good. It plays really well. They've added a bunch of new features, and I really like how deep it is. There's a lot of different things you can focus on, whether it's faith or, you know, world domination. I haven't really picked which one I like the best. <laughs> but, you, know, you know, just just pull a pope. <laughs> I did just meet Spain the other day, and he said, I'm really glad you have accepted my delegation. I hope you enjoy the churros. Did he say that? <laughs> he said you hope you enjoy the churros. That's amazing. <laughs> That was okay by me. <laughs> yeah. I may be remembering this incorrectly, but I believe one of the criticisms when 6 came out was that the AI was kind of goofy. Yes. And have they since patched it? Is it no. better? No. <laughs> <laughs> the actual gameplay looks really clean. It's really cohesive, looks really good. But all the cutscenes with the different leaders, they do look a little bit different than previous games. They're a little bit more goofy looking. And I think right. they're kind of more biased on certain characters. Like the men are really goofy looking. Like Gandhi, he looks like a South Park character. Uh, the other <laughs> characters, they just their faces are really full. And then you get to the female characters and they all just look like your preschool teacher. It's just it's very weird. <laughs> everybody looks very everybody looks very friendly. Like you see Gandhi and you're like, wow, that guy's so nice. And then like Well, I mean, I, I assume that Gandhi was kind of nice, but No. Like three hundred turns game. in, he nukes you and it's just like <laughs> Well, do you know why that is? I mean, I know it's been sort of a thing in that game. <laughs> So in the first version of Civilization, they made it so he has the lowest potential to attack. But when you there's a certain ability that lowers it, so he has like the lowest chance and he, it lowers it even more and that turns it around to make it so it's the highest. So it's <laughs> it's kind of it was a bug in the first game. They kind of just kept it going for the last few years, like for the last iterations of it, just as a kind of tribute to it. Gandhi, so violent. So violent. So angry. Dan, what have you been up to, man? I have been playing games. Um, <laughs> Good job. obviously, this is I mean, we have robot a... Dan is taking over again. No, I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, I'm totally a human. <laughs> I use my human organs to, you know, breathe human air and do human things. I don't murder humans in my basement with my robot lasers. That's silly. Um, <laughs> but anyway, I've been playing Absolver a bunch <laughs> and I know you're going to say, Ian, oh, I've been playing Absolver a bunch. And I know that Chris is going to be saying, oh, I've been playing Absolver a bunch because yep. we kind of bought Absolver out of spite for Ian because Ian <laughs> was talking about it so much. <laughs> I was just like, all right, well, I'm going to get it and it's going to be crappy and I'm going to rub it in his face. And that's pretty fun. You know, as far as MMO fighting games go, it's on the top there. MMO fighting games. It's not really an MMO. <laughs> it's not. It's really not. It's more like it's a massively closed world cooperative pvp rpg which is not a really great acronym no does it have a matchmaking system or is it, it does. random kind of. it does yeah yeah kind of so when you when you drop into a, i'll call it a shard like a shard server up to three people can join you in the particular spot in the world that you're in in but the no instance i guess yeah, so you won't see any more than three people running around the same place. And that seems pretty random, so I don't think it tries to hook you up with people of the same amount of power, because I tend to bump into people who are much lower or much higher, which is kind of fine, because a lot of that is uh, just kind of bopping around together, beating up PvE guys. And then there's an arena where it actually ranks you against other people. Cool. No, I've had a good time with it. it I think I think it's really satisfying in terms of its gameplay. It just really, it's going to need some more content really soon. And they're, they're ironing out some of the connectivity bugs because there was some lag yeah, there's issues a lot. on launch. But, you know, with a big multiplayer online game, it's kind of been part of the... Part of the experience. But really deep. Super deep. And you get to the, like make all your own move sets and combos. I love that. Well, yeah, what's deep about it is the combat. It's not the story or the the yes. world that they created what's deep is, right. is the combat and i think that's what is really successful about it like is another take on the kind of arena fighter like street mm -hmm. fighter or tekken or but like more open world and more i don't know it's not it's not knowing combos it's about crafting your yeah your sets i guess yeah and that's what that's what's kind of cool about it is that the combat system is so in-depth without being super in-depth 
Like you can play – well, because you can either craft things very specifically to do what you want or you can just set it up. So, yeah, I just punch people until they eventually stop being around because I punch right. them so much. Actually, pulling off a combo is really easy because essentially yeah. you're just pressing the same button. Press X to pay respects. Yeah, X or Y, essentially. You press X to pay respects. But – the complexity comes from designing those combos so that they actually work. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's pretty cool. I think it's $30 on Steam right now. I would recommend it if you like fighting games, but not to anybody who's not really into fighting games. Or if you have friends. If you don't have friends, it might not be as fun. I'm not sure. No, if you don't have friends. I don't know. Will, tell us about that. How's it feel tonight? <laughs> um... Speaking of Will, Will fucking betrayed us. I yeah, did. he did. did something horrible this past week. I did a bad thing. So, all right. First, uh, I've been playing Momodora, uh, Reverie Under the Moonlight. Oh, oh yes, what a, Momodora. What so a fun side-scrolling game. And I did not expect to like this because it's uh, not to use the DS word again, but it's like Dark Souls, but from the side. So Metroidvania. Yeah, it's a it's a Metroidvania. It's a Metroidvania. It's a Metroidvania. Yeah. It's it's got wonderful, wonderful music to it. I really enjoyed it. It's a nice kind of ethereal backdrop to the action going on. And once I got a handle on the controls, they're not complicated, but they're touchy. They're touchy. That's a good word for it. Uh, I really, really started. I got over my frustrations that I had initially and really started to have fun with the game. And you pick up little snippets of story along the way. And Ian, you can tell us a little more on that because you're farther along than me on it. But uh, <laughs> but yeah, I've, I've really had a good time with that. And I definitely recommend picking that up, even if you're not a person who's ever played a game like that before. If you like good music and an interesting but not very deep story, there's just enough there to... to make up a little extra lore in your brain about I, I've really enjoyed it. And then so I went into Best Buy to pick out some pick up some stuff. And while I was there, All right, I, hold on, hold on. Okay. Hold on. Before you're talking about be- betraying us, I need to talk about Momodora. Yeah. So I, I rolled the credits on Momodora today. Um, I also got it this past week from the <clears throat> Humble Bundle for September. Humble Bundle. Humble, Humble, Humble Bundle. Bundle. Humble Bundle. Um, Humble Bundle. Really, really, really good Metroidvania. And what I liked most about it, first of all, the combat is really precise, which is super fun. And it's not complicated, but you do have to have your brain on it. It's it's more like it's almost more like Mega Man than your standard Metroidvania, because your powers, they evolve a little bit, but they don't they don't change in a huge way like they would in like a Metroid game or in like Ori in the Blind Forest. You're completely different at the end than you are when you start. It evolves a little bit, but it's not uh, super complex the way they evolve. But what they do a great job of is is the little sprites. They're drawn so well that you just love them. That's true. That's the true. The priestess I really who like you are that. is really cool. Any of the friendly characters who you bump into even once, you kind of fall in love with them. Um, even the enemies are really, really well drawn and well put together. And it took me maybe six hours to complete, which this is becoming a thing that I actually really like. A game that you can crack open and then be done mm, with in mm-hmm. like six hours is super satisfying. Yes, it is. To me, at least. Yes, right it now. is. Especially if it's, you know, in Humble Bundle. So you paid like nothing for it. Well, for the busy lifestyle, I like I have no time to wipe my ass, let alone play a video game. That's not uh, that's Will. not true. That was just a phrase. <laughs> that's I just horrible. Want, it's just, I just, <laughs> oh my gosh, please uh, wipe your ass. I, please, I, like, I you can go right now. We'll, Will, we'll, leave. Leave. we'll stop <laughs> now. Go do it. It's cool, no, dude. I, uh, I really appreciate being able to sit down, play a little of the game, play a little here and there, and then finish it within the span of a day or a couple of days and, and be done with it and move on to something else. Uh, so I'm with you on that. It's it's yeah, great. Okay, so so now you can tell us of your sin, my son. Okay, so I went to uh, I went to Best Buy uh, for confession, and while I was there, I was picking up some <laughs> stuff, and... Uh, I noticed this display over in the gaming section. It was this. It was this guy with some like spacey sort of suit, and he had a cool little gun. Uh, and it was a Destiny two display. And so I walked over and I looked. I thought, you know, I missed out on Destiny the first time around. I didn't play it for years, and by the time I got into it, nobody was really nobody was really in the beginning sections of it. I didn't have any friends to play with, and I missed out on all that hype and all those conversations. So I had a decision to make, and I decided that I was going to pick it up right now on Xbox One and go ahead and be part of that from the very beginning so that I could have that experience this time around. That's a huge title. I want to have that experience and be up to date at all hours. 
uh, on that, knowing full well that next month I'm going to have to repurchase the game so that I can play it <laughs> so with you So you can guys. play with us, you dick. So I made the decision while at Best Buy that I will be spending $120 on this game. Which is funny because you were like, oh, I don't have the $30 for Absolver right now. I got paid. <laughs> oh. for I got paid. Uh, by the way, if anyone's curious, <laughs> amazing, amazing presentation. <laughs> I love, love the opening section of the game. It really does a good job because I didn't get that deep into Destiny 1, so I don't know tons of the, the back lore. Uh, it really does a good job making you care about the environment, why it is the way it is, and what's going on. Uh, and just like anything, there's a big disaster and shit goes down and you're sad about it, and then you pick up your character, and it's time to whip some ass and, and go through town and do what needs to be done. Uh, but it's it's really, really intelligently put together, very meaningful, and uh, the gameplay is just, just tons of fun. All right. Chris, what have you been up to? I, I was going to say, they have a pretty star-studded cast for the voice actors, too. Yeah, Nathan Oh, Fillion, yeah, the voice the acting's one. really good. Um, it's Sean Benjamin's in there. Ooh. Um, what? Yeah. Oh, Whoa! That's he's awesome. uh, of Archer fame, correct? Yeah, yeah. He's radio voice. I don't know what that is because I haven't played it yet. Did you but... say Nathan Fillion? Nathan Fillion's Cade Six. Yeah. Oh, nice. nice. Um, how did you not hear that already? I noticed the thing. The one. The voice I noticed was um, Commander Zavala. In the beginning, is the um, lieutenant in The Wire. If any of you've watched that, yeah. he is. Yeah. You know they were. He's got an all awesome these characters voice. were in the previous Destiny too, right? Yes. Okay. Okay. Good. Just making sure. Sorry. For a second, I, I thought like you were going to say that all, right. all these characters were in the wire, and I was like, I don't think that's how <laughs> Destiny Two works. No. No. <laughs> Kane Six is like in the bathroom shooting up before biology. No. No. Destiny Three, when they pull the whole cast of Big Bang, is going to be bitching. It's going to be awesome. <laughs> oh God. All right. So, Chris, what have you been playing? This so, week? I've been playing Absolver also. Um, yeah. And then recently on Friday, I got a 1080 Ti. In the mail. Oh, mm, so beefy. Yeah, so I've been playing basically anything that looks pretty and not really just playing them, just looking at it. <laughs> so <laughs> so I've been looking at like The Witcher 3, Rise of the Tomb Raider, and just, you know, like dip, like getting a taste of them with, with the max settings at 1440p. Awesome. Congrats, which man. I know you've wanted one nice. of those for a long time. Yeah, it's, it's real nice now that I have it. I love it. <laughs> Sweet. What are you doing with your old graphics card? Did you get rid of it? I don't know yet. It might go into my girlfriend's rig. It might. I might sell it on Craigslist. I don't know. What is your old card? GTX 980. Oh, game broke it away. I'm not that rich. <laughs> yeah. Not not yet. So I think the only thing that hasn't been mentioned that I have also been playing is probably Mario plus Rabbit's Kingdom Battle, which I mentioned briefly last week. It's for the Switch. It's basically XCOM, but with Mario and Rabbit's characters put together by Ubisoft under the auspices of Nintendo. And it's really good. Has anyone else played this? Anyone no. else? No. I haven't played it, but I saw some articles on how people actually sort of like the rabbits now i know kind of like the worst thing ever but like princess peach rabbit is so sassy and awesome <laughs> <laughs> i'm kind of tempted so i am completely one of those people who was not into rabbits at all and now i like think they're cute and hilarious and perfect because they totally pulled it off in this game um so i went into this game thinking like Ugh, i don't want to have any of them in my party I just want to play with Mario and Luigi and Peach and have fun. And then they make you use the rabbits, but they're awesome in the cutscenes. Like the first cutscene, she knocks a boss off the cliff and then she takes a selfie with it as it's falling down the cliff. And she's like, and the boss is like, Meh. that's really good. <laughs> that's awesome. There are some visuals there that everybody missed. Yeah, those, they're, they're, those are going to translate really well in the audio recording. I, I was both Peach <laughs> and the giant ugly boss. So you can imagine. And he actually, that. he changed outfits really quickly too. I did. I yeah, it was did. really impressive. It was super Thank impressive. You. I wish he'd put his pants back on now, though. It's just, it's kind of distracting. No, I mean, well, Alex isn't here, so someone has to have their pants off right now. That's true. In observance of September 19th, which we all know is uh, National Talk Like a Pirate Day, we've decided to have some rather piratey topics to discuck here. Isn't that correct? <laughs> it be true. <laughs> it's, it, I, there be many facts we have to talk about there. <laughs> so our first topic is pirates in another life. And we wanted to talk about video game characters who could have been pirates 
in another life. And I think we have some really, uh, some really great candidates here. And I want to kick it off with Dan's suggestion because um, I wouldn't have thought of this, but it's kind of perfect. Oh, yeah, because I was thinking about it, about like, who would be a good pirate? And Lara Croft is kind of already a pirate, but like way slow because she just robs people of their things. Like, way after they're done with Way them. after they're gone. <laughs> like, they're done using... <laughs> She's a very polite pirate. Are, are you... Are you, are you going to use that? No, no well, I'll, just, I'll have it. Thank you. Sorry. Oh, she's also got a British accent, and a lot of pirates were British, so she it's could true. be like that, too. Um, but no, I mean, that, you know, she's good at jumping around. She could probably use swords. I mean, she uses guns and stuff, mostly. You know, I don't think I've ever seen her use a sword before. I don't think so either. Maybe, yeah. I don't know. She probably Swords. did for one of those cut the cut the rope to slide up the. Oh yeah, yeah, one of those. Yeah, she Definitely. has like a like a mountain axe or something, which is you know it's, it's like a rock climbing she, thing. She doesn't. She never lost any limbs though. I feel like that's my defining attribute for pirates is that they almost always don't have all of their limbs. No, like missing Jack a leg Sparrow. And arm. Jack Sparrow no. had all his limbs. True. Yeah, but he didn't have a soul. For a while that's true he was yeah, he lost that's true does laura croft drink a lot i don't think she does no she doesn't no. it doesn't fit with her active lifestyle well, that's okay <laughs> that's okay i remember you could lock your butler in that uh in that uh, that ice room or in your refrigerator in the original one that was very that's kind of a pirate that was very pirate you know it's like i'm gonna lock in here yar stay in the fridge <laughs> <laughs> christine what do you got characters that could have been pirates in another so this is kind of random. I I grew up with a really, really young sister. She's 10 years. She's my only sibling. She's 10 years younger than me. So I got stuck playing a lot of really, really crappy video games, a lot of Ooh. cartoon stuff. And I, I love cartoons. But one of my favorites, I have to say, was um, just like a simple, like, it was Billy and Mandy, which is just like Grim Adventures. And Billy, the title Billy of the and Mandy was it's Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy, and it was a video. Okay. It was like a fighter game with the characters. Okay. And one of the characters, his play style is probably my favorite and easy to kick my sister's ass with. Um, Hostel Gato. He's kind of like a uh, combination of Venture Brothers and. It's kind of like I guess he'd kind of be like a uh, Snake Plissken. Yeah, yeah. So uh, he's like an A team sort of like has an eye patch. He's missing an arm and. The cool part about his character is his arm has different attachments that you can use for each one. So sort of like yeah, power up. Right on. So he has like a steel fist, which is like kind of basic, but he also has a crossbow that shoots chainsaws, which I thought was like kind of the coolest thing ever. <laughs> <laughs> because I if you think of a better thing to shoot out of a crossbow. Yeah. Honestly. I mean, if you're going to be a pirate and not have limbs, like why not retrofit your non-existent arm with something awesome like a crossbow? The chainsaws. Right. I mean, it's just it's kind of like a Evil it's, Dead I mean, that's thing pretty, too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But Ash yeah. Williams. I kind of like that gameplay. I was trying to think of any other characters that do that, like you know, bionic arm kind of stuff. But yeah. yeah. So so Big Boss from uh, Metal Gear Solid Five, uh, among mm-hmm. other mm-hmm. things, was one of mine because he has mechanical arm, right? Yeah. And bonus eye patch. Oh man, they uh, could be course. classic of pirates. He's basically a uh, a pirate already. Mecha pirate. Mecha pirate. <laughs> <laughs> Space pirates. Uh, Will, what do you got? Pirates in another life. So I've got two. I associate pirates with people who steal your shit. And there are two people who oh. come to mind for that uh, quite easily for me. The first one might be a little obscure for our younger audience, but Yuffie Kisaragi. Is that how you say her last name? From Final Fantasy VII. I'm going to say Kisaragi. Yeah, sure. Uh, she was an optional character. You did not have to get her, uh, but she the way you get her, you go through this whole routine where she steals all of your shit and you have to go get it back. And uh, she's very piratey. She has a bandana. Okay. Piratey. She has That's pirate points. She piratey, does. Yep. She does. Uh, she doesn't have a knife or a sword like pirates do, but she has yeah. this big like throwing star that's like the size. It's like if you took two pole arms and just like strapped them together. It's really large, and she throws that at you. Uh, but yeah, she's just got you know very piratey tendencies. She takes stuff and she'll stab you. Uh, so counterpoint, real quick. 
Yuffie, if I'm not mistaken, comes from basically a town of ninjas, and pirates and ninjas are basically mortal nemeses as far as, as you know, I mean, everyone goes. that knows anything about history knows that knows they're that. mortal enemies. Knows that. Yeah. yeah. Well, absolutely. That's in the pirate versus ninja war of the 1400s. It was really bloody and violent. I can't believe that. Yeah. You didn't know. I can't that. believe the pirates came out on top. That was really. Yeah, really it close. was rough. Yeah. Well, that's that's why they that's why they have a <laughs> reputation for having less limbs. You know. Yeah. Yeah. This this is very true. This is very true. <laughs> <laughs> the other video game character that I think exemplifies piracy at its finest is pac-man because pac-man's just roaming around that area belongs to the ghost they've got a house right in the middle of it and pac-man's <laughs> just going around their yard just eating their shit <laughs> just taking all their shit and then they try to go get it back and, and he just keeps taking their shit so pac-man to me is very piratey that's a stretch though he doesn't have any limbs he has he one oh eye. Oh my god, he, he has, doesn't have it. He has one oh eye. He's also eating fruit, which I don't know. That's scurvy. Scurvy. That's scurvy. Scurvy. Yeah. Scurvy. Oh my scurvy. god, he's a pirate. <laughs> Good call, Will. The perfect pirate. Uh, pirate. He's, pirate you think pain. he's going waka waka waka, but he's really going waka uh, waka waka waka. <laughs> you heard it here first, ladies and gentlemen. Pac-Man is a pirate. pirate. Can <laughs> More, more, just the facts from the Game Brew Podcast. Ah, <laughs> uh, Chris, you have some ones that I also don't understand here. Maybe the second one, but what, okay. what's the first? Well, one? my first one was Ganondorf, which is pretty obvious. Interesting. He's trying to steal a kingdom. Yeah, but but he doesn't do like that's just like general evil. He thing. grew up thieving, and like the uh, Gerudo were a bunch of thieves. They're basically like sand pirates. Hmm. Are, are they thieves or do they just yeah. live in the desert no they're, no they're thieves they're, they're a band of thieves huh somehow i missed that and i mean he does he is he does have all his limbs i'll admit that he does he does and he has both of his eyes but i don't know he's he's got that kind of piratey feel to me he's always had that for me i think i think it's the thieving back hmm. Hmm. wouldn't that just make him a thief but he's like the king. He's like the. But he's like the king, though. Like of the Gerudo, he's like oh, the. Man, he's, sorry, he's got a sword. Thieves don't have swords. Thieves have like lock picks and stuff, and and often he guns. He doesn't. He doesn't pick locks. No, he punches locks. Probably. Pirates. Pirates have Uses swords. Magic. He has a ponytail. He his does. ponytail, oh, which yeah. often pirates don. He has like a man bun thing. He has a man bun more. I think that's it. Potato, potato. You know, just go with it. No, it's potato, Will. It's potato. I'm, I'm yeah, sorry. no one says potato. I, well, sorry. It was a metaphor. I was trying to help you. You're, you're welcome. Not anymore, though. Never mind. <laughs> I mean, hey, you haven't really seen Ganondorf, so it's yeah, fine. It's, Whoa! Oh, there it is. <laughs> Hashtag Will still hasn't finished Ocarina of Time. <laughs> We should have a we should have a daily count of how many days it's been since <laughs> he started and has not finished that game. Um, it's been approximately five podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> my second choice was Gaslow. Uh, um uh one of the he's one of the goblins uh, in ratchet yes and and very piratey yes the, like R ratchet was a very oh, well, a little yeah. ratchet but like it was a very piratey town it was Dude, uh, booty he's perfect bay. um yeah yeah they lived in booty bay booty they love bay. gold they love gold he loves he's got mechanical he's got he's got like a mechanical thing on his back um, he wears the he pirate talks like vest a pirate. I don't know if you've red. ever heard him talk, but he's he talks like a pirate. I guess yeah, most goblins in that game do for whatever reason. I buy the Gaslow argument. Yeah, I buy it. absolutely. Yep. Yeah, he even and has then, like a perennial grimace on his face. Like oh he's, yeah. Well, and he's a goblin, so he's always trying to steal shit too. Although that's a little racist, Chris. To be honest, the what now? Not all goblins are thieves. That's all I'm saying. Are just because his skin's me? green doesn't mean. Are you saying that, that I'm anti goblin? No, I'm just saying green Whoa. lives matter. There, it's out there. <laughs> oh. It's out there. Green lives matter, man. Oh, they do. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm not supposed to laugh at that. And the obvious but not orcs. one is um, not orcs. Junkrat. Junkrat. Junkrat? Yep. Junkrat. Wait, Junkrat? Really? Of all the Overwatch characters, you choose Junkrat to be the pirate? Well, he's missing a bunch of limbs. And he, he likes to make things leg. explode, and he loves stealing shit. He does. Okay. John Kratz, yeah, he's, well, what about yeah. He's pretty piratey. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I didn't think about Overwatch. What about the purple girl? What's her What's her name? Sombra? Uh, Sombra. Sombra. 
She's kind of like a techno pirate. Kind of. She's yeah, yeah, like she, she, she does. Yeah, she's like a pirate of the internet almost. Isn't she missing an eye also? Is she? Mm, I don't think no. so. No, she no, never mind. Never mind. I was thinking of something else. I, that's funny because when I thought about Overwatch characters who might be good for this, I immediately went to Roguehog, who seems like the obvious choice because he has a hook that he uses to great effect. Yeah, but I don't think pirates were obese. I do. That's true. Like, they were definitely they were so no. They lived a very the active life. Active, like you could, the there's only so cooks. much food on a on a ship. Yeah, but then you get into port and you just rape and pillage and, you know, eat. No, Raping and pillaging. No. Beer. Well, probably burn a lot of calories. I'm going to say they burn a lot of calories. Have you ever hoisted some shit up on a mast? Have you ever hoisted, what do you call that? <laughs> what do you call it, the sails? Have you ever hoisted the sails up a mast? <laughs> that, shit is yeah. heavy. Yes. that shit is Actually, heavy. Actually, I have. <laughs> that shit is like super heavy. <laughs> I'm guessing I don't actually it. know this to be a fact. No, that's true. That is true. <laughs> Have you ever swabbed the poop deck? <laughs> Will, I think you need to phrase. swab your poop deck. You need to swab your poop deck. <laughs> All right, that's it for segment one. Let us know what Video King characters you think were pirates in another life. Arr. You can do that by sending us an email at thegamebrew Arr. at gmail.com or hitting us up at the Game Brew on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We're going to go ahead and take a quick break when we come back we'll check in with the beer discuss games that stole valuable mechanics from other titles like pirates do so stick with us Arr. 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 make a pirate noise christine Arr. <laughs> Arr. <laughs> uh, i'm gonna get another beer Is everybody good? Everybody good? Everybody ready to go? Good. Yeah. I am ready. Hey. <laughs> and Chris, that means yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh. All right. Welcome back to the Game Brew Podcast. This is the second half of episode 13. Let's check in with our beer. We're drinking Anchor Steam beer this week. How's it uh, How's it sitting on the... Ooh, good one, Will. Thank you. <laughs> how's it sitting on the palate there, friends? Unfortunately, it's no longer on the palate because I'm out of beer and I need another did, one. Did you drink all six? I was going to say. I have one left. You drank five of them already? Not from tonight. Not from tonight. Oh. Like, oh. Jesus. From like yesterday to, and tonight. Today. <laughs> today. <laughs> Hey, and remember that one time you drank six golden monkeys in the one podcast? That Maybe? is impressive. Yeah? Yeah, I did that. <laughs> that <laughs> Notice a, that how he didn't lot. say he remembered. <laughs> no, I, I, there, I had fond memories of that. <laughs> <laughs> I say this all the time, and it, it's just a beer thing. I don't know what it is. I, I, I think it's your palate just adapting to what you're drinking, but it gets better the more you drink of it. And it just seems like it starts to go down smoother and smoother and smoother. Uh, I do like Christine's point of this is a good, I forget the term she used, but intermediary beer before you go to something heavier. The longer I drink it, the smoother it gets, but also the less flavor it seems to maintain. Um, and, I, and I find myself craving, while I'm enjoying it, craving something that's got some more sustenance to it, if that makes some sense, and some more kick. Have you guys noticed that all, on the tops of the caps, they have like little facts about the brewery? I did notice that, yeah. I think that's really cool. I got one. What, uh, in 1933, Anchor reopens at 13th and Harrison. Nice. You know what's great about this is it allows the game brew to have actual facts. These that's are right. real we facts. Can, we're quoting them from a valid source. We, and we're this citing the them, too. That's right. Mine says Anchor sells 882 barrels of beer. I actually have that one, too. No way. No way. Is this we on the top side friends. or underside? The, it's on the bottom. The side that you wouldn't be able to see normally. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> mine says 1896, Anchor Brewery Ooh. Established. Ooh, that's a good one. Ooh, that's, that's a, a good, really good, good one. There's so much facts going on in that. 1998, first bottling Anchor Small Beer. Mine says that uh, San Francisco's General Brewing closed down in 1978. Burr. Dude! Dude, what does mine say? 
now that we're drinking this, I really do realize it, during my visit to San Francisco, I drank a lot of this. And I, I didn't remember it until now. Well, so, you're welcome. I was having a really good time. It's a good beer. <laughs> it, it's really common on the West Coast. This is like, I'm um, trying to think what's an East Coast beer that's common out there. It's not common out here. Yingling. But... Yingling. Yeah, yeah. It's like Yingling almost. It's like, it's everywhere. Everybody has it. And, it's and clearly it's popular over here. I had to go to five liquor stores to find it. Because all the other four were sold out. Not yeah, no, they, no, they were like, yeah, we carry it. But not right now. We don't have it. Kind of reminds me of like a dogfish head. Because I feel like that stuff different kinds really sell out here mm. too mm-hmm. yeah right yeah they're yeah and dogfish head is a little bit less on this west coast but not, i will not, say not ian you haven't commented on this yet or if you did i didn't i missed it but i will say that this beer has the most beautiful color of any beer that we've had yet it's my favorite one well that doesn't help our listeners it does not, it's just the brownest <laughs> it is it Stop is a deep making amber comments. is what i would is what i would term it as it's a deep gorgeous. amber but if you follow us on twitter or instagram or facebook you might be able to see a picture of it yeah you Whoa. will <laughs> ooh ooh speaking ooh speaking of followers speaking of so i've been listening to the game brew at work every week or so and uh, i remember I, I just have this memory of possibly there being some sort of challenge of um something about a hundred followers on facebook and will having to do something maybe he didn't want to do wasn't that a and thousand what? followers uh, wasn't that a thousand i don't no. know I i'm pretty sure followers. it was a hundred and i'm pretty sure you're at 103 <laughs> at this moment we need to do research what episode was that i don't even remember I don't want to play know. Stardew Valley. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to play. Well, you can you're take the only my place. That hasn't here. Oh, fine. I will play over the next week. I will play Stardew Valley. Yeah, you'll have to take some time out of your Destiny Two. Oh, re- God. Re- yeah. This is Routine. what happens when you tell people to listen. This is true. <laughs> this is true. It, we we better get more followers for this bullshit because if I'm gonna be <laughs> if I'm gonna be farming, I expect to I expect to cultivate some uh, crops of yeah, listeners. I mean, I mean, can I say gonna, that? How I can that? guarantee that you will cultivate crops. I'm gonna cultivate could, the shit out of some crops. <laughs> you could fish. In fact, if we cultivate enough listeners, we might be able to beat the competition. <laughs> oh, that was so corn. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I get it. Beats, right? Uh, uh, guys, I don't want to. I don't know. Yeah, I don't want to wheat to start this next. Uh, this next segment. So can we? <laughs> I don't want to wheat. Yeah. Eh. All right, let's go ahead and move on to segment two. This is a segment we're calling "Stealing the Booty: Games That Have Stolen Mechanics from Other Titles." And I want to go to uh, Will first because he's talking about. Um, some really cool stuff. Will, what do you got? Cover shooters are the big thing that comes to mind for me for one of the biggest pirated, if you will, gaming mechanics. And uh, the big elephant in the room with that, so to speak, is is Gears of War. Uh, but Gears of War, uh, who did Gears of War? Gearbox? Who was that? Gearbox? Uh, have admitted they didn't invent this mechanic. And, and I did some research. The earliest I was kind of thinking was like, Maybe Splinter Cell, that wasn't really a cover shooter, but it had a few cover mechanics. You could pop out from behind the wall and shoot. One of the earliest, actually, was Time Crisis. Do you do you guys remember this arcade game, yes. Time Crisis? They had Time the, Crisis was like shit. They had a cover so button and a, they had a foot pedal. And when you press the pedal down, you popped out from behind cover. And when you lift, lifted the pedal up, you popped out behind, or you popped back into cover and, because you couldn't move around. It was one of those games like Area 51 in the arcade. You just had... You just had the gun. Oh, by the way, it's uh, it's Epic, not Gearbox. Gearbox did not do Gears of War. Gearbox Epic. did Borderlands. Thank you, thank you. Ah, uh, there it is. Epic did Gears of War. I'm sorry. Uh, but that was one of the earliest things, and that was such a unique thing. But it didn't catch on in a huge, huge way, really, I feel like, until Gears of War. And when Gears did that, it just fucking exploded. And then everybody and their mother had cover-based mechanics and games, it seemed like, forever. And we still have that. It's just not... You're not getting beaten in the face with it in every game you turn to at the moment. Well, they really they really went all in on it and really mastered it, I think. They did a really great job with... Cause they did. It, and it was like one of the big mainstream things, I feel like, that had cover-based shooting. 
and like where you could shoot over the wall with without looking but like you'd be super inaccurate like that that was a pretty big different thing that you hadn't really seen i actually one of the things about gears of war that i really didn't like was the cover shooting to be honest what? Uh, that was like the whole concept well, of the game there was the best and that's part. what i'm saying like i never really got into that. gears i never really got into gears because it was basically a cover shooter but that was the only thing that it was. And like, I, on the one hand, yeah, I think you're right. They did it pretty well. On the other hand, I really think that shooters are more interesting when they're not entirely based on well, cover. I would... so, so if you have if you have a game like Mass Effect, where there's a bunch of other systems and a bunch of other things going on, you could add cover shooting as something to be in there, right? And And I feel like the Uncharted series kind of gets away with it because there's puzzle sections and all that running while buildings are falling apart kind of stuff that goes on too but something about the gears mechanics came off as very bland to me when i played those games you know if you this was in a kotaku article and it took a while to sink in uh, it's a really good article uh, i'll link it in the show notes uh, because it's exactly on this topic of co- the evolution of cover shooting mechanics in games somebody in the comments of that made a really good point that aren't all first person shooters technically or even third person shooters for that matter aren't all shooters in some fashion cover dependent it may not be like a no. core component where you press a button no, but it's not like but, you you don't sticky to a lot of a lot of them like well, and, and, yeah. but that's not what i mean that's not what i mean the comment was specifically saying cover is a component of all games to have a cover mechanic is just taking something that you would normally do in a shooting game and turning that into a way that you play the game with button presses as opposed to, oh, let me run behind boxes, recover some health. Okay, now let me come back right. up. Let me strafe back out from those boxes. And I thought that was a really interesting point. That's something we've always done, but we've never thought of that as a mechanic of the game. It's just, oh, I need health. Like in Destiny 2, when I need health, I don't hit the cover button. I run behind boxes for a minute. Right. Because you don't need a cover button because you can just run behind boxes. Yeah. Which are clearly very solid cover. I also think that sometimes cover mechanics can dissuade you from or dissuade the developers really from developing more intricate movement mechanics. So a game like Vanquish or a game like Doom, uh, movement is life. As long as you're moving, you're okay, And that keeps things from getting kind of stale. Whereas in a Gears of War, as long as you're behind a wall that's, you know, waist high, you can basically stay alive forever. But I I think it also makes it more of a slower paced game and maybe creates a little more strategy because another game that I think got some of the cover based shooting from Gears and and did a pretty good job with it was Army of Two. And with that also, they also had an aggro mechanic. And the whole concept of that game was that you had two players playing at the same time and, and you would use this strategy with that by being able to flank others by one person getting aggro or just getting someone's attention, basically, which is something that they, I guess, pulled from the what I can think of was MMORPGs. Like, that was a massive mechanic for MMORPGs, but like, wow, um, for tanks to, like, make sure that if someone was getting attacked, it would be the tank. Um, and to bring that into shooters was, I think, a really cool thing. That is interesting how that, how that aggro mechanic sort of branched out to other places. That's cool. I think it takes a really special game to uh, to not have cover in some fashion, whether it's a direct mechanic or not, to not have that as a core component of the game, meaning the absence of that, like Serious Sam, Doom, Postal. Those games are games that do that very, very well, and there's just this franticism constantly in what that you're doing. Speedy, there's nothing arcade feel. Speedy, arcade and there's nothing to hide behind. Um, I think cover as a gameplay element it is so ingrained in what we're doing that we notice it very specifically when it's not part of the experience. Christine, what do you got for booty games that stole mechanics from other games? For booty, I was kind of trying to think of like specific things because there are some games that are just like total ripoffs. Like, <laughs> uh, the first thing that came to mind was like the whole Crazy Taxi, Simpsons, yeah, Road Rage kind of thing. Because oh, I mean. Yeah. I couldn't help but think, why base a whole game around the style, the exact style of another game, when was there even a taxi driver in The Simpsons? I mean, they had every Mm. sort of character. Why was that necessary? Wow, that's interesting. Like, Mm. literally every single kind of character that there Mm. could be, there is in The Simpsons. But there was, I don't, I can't think of a taxi driver. Uh, I I think you're right. That's a good point. I guess just kind of 
games like that have their own brand already, they kind of just like latch on to other game styles that are coming out because putting that sort of style of gameplay, they can see their characters in that. Shadows of Mordor, Assassin's mm, Creed comparison, mm-hmm. sort of. I mean, well, and also um, they had the combat of of Arkham, the Arkham games. games. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, but at the same time, they had really interesting things that it wasn't like the whole game was based on that one thing. They took that idea and they brought By the it nemesis into it. system. Yeah, which is pretty pretty cool. I it was great. I'm glad you mentioned that. I've been. I'm still playing through Shadow of Mordor, getting ready for Shadow of War, and I've been thinking about why is this game so interesting? And it had never occurred to me until you said that, that it's the elements, of, it's Assassin's Creed, and it's the Arkham games jammed into one. I, I've noticed that, but I haven't actively combined those two in my brain. And that's a, I think that's an interesting component of taking stealing two things. To yeah. create something really familiar, uh, but it's this new. It's it feels like a very much new experience because I think you true. need to have familiarity with certain kinds of gameplay to sort. I mean, you wouldn't be able to just pick up a controller and start playing if you weren't familiar with some sort of mechanics. So you kind of have to steal things from other games. But the fact that they combine it with other things and make it their own that makes me want to play it. And that game, it feels very personalized. So yeah, I like it. But I like it too. Yeah, I couldn't help but find a bunch of different things. So it's kind of hard to focus on one. Yeah, the big thing that that popped into my mind, I mean, recently, uh, Mario plus Rabbids Kingdom, obviously, like, they didn't even pirate stuff. They just straight up like threw a brick through XCOM's window and ran <laughs> off with their shit. <laughs> and, and it's really good. Um, and I love that they reskinned it and kind of made it more accessible, a little bit more like a puzzle game than a strategy game really once you get a little bit deeper into mario it turns mario plus rabbits it turns into more of like kind of a puzzle game than a strategy game like XCOM is the other thing that popped out to me as a really big recent one was how borderlands just straight up took the loot concepts from diablo and applied them to guns and had a massive hit on their hands Mm -hmm. yeah the randomized um item creation stat bonus Yeah. yeah well and i think i think what made that work really well was the fact that you could see what you were shooting looked different and it was cool, right. you know? Yeah. They had the different the different companies that made the exploding ones or the sniper ones or the element ones and you you could you could see how your gun came to be based on what it looked like. Yeah. Whereas like in Diablo three it's mostly just like the way you look and um numbers on the screen. Dan, what do you got, man? One thing that's that's quick I want to talk about is because of all the video game card games that are out there. Because uh. those those <laughs> video game card games stole card games from real card games. It's just like <laughs> those are card games, you know. It's got like the Pokemon trading card game that I played on my uh, Game Boy. I played that more than I played the actual Pokemon trading card game. Yeah, I played the I played the I never owned a Yu Gi Oh card, but I played the shit out of the Yu Gi Oh Game Boy Advance game. Yeah, why, why did we decide that was a thing? <laughs> like, just at some point, we were just like, nah, corpor- corporeal stuff bullshit we need things that are not non-existent to play with i also think it's hard to get together with people sometimes yeah going digital yeah. is much easier i find it so hard to play tabletop games with my friends i have maybe one friend that's like i'm down to play this anytime any day and then everybody else is kind of like, dan eh. is it dan eh. i mean I, I have said I just, that i have said that on very many occasions where i'm like yeah i'll totally play it that game with you you did i did i was gonna throw you under the bus and say i wouldn't even invite you but you're (laughs) (laughs) no i think that's a super good point i have wanted to get into magic the gathering for like a decade and it's so hard to find people to play with so i just too late yeah yeah will you're gathering what jumped the shark no people still play that years ago People I know still people play still that. play it, but it's not good anymore. No, d- excuse me? Will being a loser aside. Um, <laughs> um, the... I, I did want to say something about that, though, because on, on my my list, th- there was also kind of a thing recently with the Madden games and I think the FIFA games, too, mm-hmm. where yeah. there was a collectability thing, like trying to get different players for your online team, and you would open packs. And I, I think part of it was monetization for EA to just 
get more Mm -hmm. money that way but i just thought it was a little strange at first i will say that it does bother me now that a lot of the games i know player unknowns battlegrounds implemented this recently and it just happened to me in rocket league the other day where i got a crate and it was like hey guys there's all this cool loot in this crate and i was like oh my gosh a crate with loot i'm so excited and i went to open it it was like yeah you just need a key to open that and the key costs real money what a bunch of bullshit they got that from csgo yeah they did okay so so wherever that came from Give me the loot or don't give me the loot, but don't halfway give me the loot and yeah. then ask me to pay money for it. Like, talk to Valve about that. I will talk to Valve about that. I, I'm will. sending Gabe Newell Gabe a Newell. letter right now. You bastard. Sometimes he responds. I'm sure apparently. he will hand write it back on pink stationery. It'll be like a really short response. Scented? But he, Is it going to be scented? Scented? Yes, it will be scented. He'll smell like fresh ass sweat from all the gamers. I would- <laughs> I was going to say, I'm going to have Will wipe his butt with it. Just wipe the poop deck with it. Well, he's got to wipe it with something. Jeez. Somebody's got to help him. Dan, what do you got, man? The thing that I want, like the main one, was just World of Warcraft. And basically, like every MMORPG, like you look at it and they all have this same UI, like HUD interface. Yeah. You know? Where they all have, like, uh, there's a little map in the upper right hand corner. Um, you got like your chat window on the lower left hand side. You've got all your hot keys on the bottom. The keys are hot. Shit's hot. <laughs> <laughs> Going on a t-shirt. It's it's just interesting that it's just like all of those and all those games like and the first one I think was called Realm Fifty Nine and that was back in nineteen ninety six and that had that you know, kind of classic like your hot bar at the bottom and it had all your standard things. It was like one of the first three D MMORPGs that wasn't like a okay. I wonder how much of that is due to MMOs essentially stealing the gameplay mechanics from WoW. So like the interaction in a lot of MMOs is really similar. You run up to a creature and then you use abilities. It's not like a shooter where you're clicking to try Mm -hmm. to like hit them or even like a brawler where you're doing moves to try to hit them because you had to interact with them in in a limited way because the massively online portion of that kind of limited the way you could interact with things. I feel like WoW made it popular, but it was around before that. Oh, yeah. Um, Way before WoW. I mean, like EverQuest did that for sure. Sure, sure. Gameplay mechanics aside, I think that Dan was talking about the HUD. I think the HUD elements from MMOs a lot of that was pulled from top-down dungeon crawlers. uh, Like Diablo. Like Diablo. The original Diablo. Back in the day. Um different gameplay mechanics but really similar in the terms of interactivity in the hud okay great good talk everybody hey way to go guys go team good job (laughs) game brew listeners what mechanics do you remember being stolen from previous titles let us know by sending us an email at thegamebrew at gmail.com or by hitting us up at the game brew on social medias right now we're going to do a special little segment that i (gasps) brewed up for this week are you guys excited Oh, very excited. Totally. I like that. Yeah. Totally. Thank you. It's going to be a great segment. I agree. So this is the gaming edition of Would You Rather. So this is how this is going to work. I'm going to ask a Would You Rather question to each of the Game Brew crew members, Ooh. and they are going to give an answer and then explain why they chose that particular answer. And then we'll all argue about how they're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> As per usual. We'll start with Will oh, on good. this one. I'm and ready. I think this one's going to be great for you because I know how much you like to play first-person shooters. So right, here on. we go. Let me stretch first. Oh, yep. shit. Lamp. Yep, stretch. Lamp. Watch the lamp. <laughs> it's a lamp. Watch the lamp. Okay. <laughs> Would you rather be forced to use a gamepad with only your face oh or God. a keyboard and mouse with only your thumbs? Oh, I'm going to go... <laughs> Oh my god, I'm gonna go keyboard and mouse with only my thumbs, because at least For I sure. have two extremities helping and I can see what I'm For doing. For sure. It'd be really hard to to shoot people slamming, slamming the your pad, face. like the, the triggers <laughs> with your face and then like moving it back around so you can move around. Dude, That'd how'd suck. you get the black eye? Fucking Destiny 2, man. <laughs> that game is rough. It'll wreck your shit. <laughs> <laughs> this one's for Chris. Chris, would you rather be forced to play all games in fast forward or play all games in bullet time uh, fast forward are you sure i'm mm. pretty sure i don't got time for sl- for you, bullet you time. wouldn't be able to play like first person shooters or anything twitchy you'd be really bad at those yeah games. i'd be fucking terrible at them yeah but if but you could go ahead finish more games i can yeah, yeah twice as fast true. maybe 
That's true. But if you could play all games in bullet time, you could be at like the top of all the rankings for Oh, that's a good point. See? It's, it's harder than you think. Much like Will's Noggin. Well, I guess mm-hmm. I guess then I'd probably be like a major league gamer or something. Yep. Like it, it would only be bullet time for me. Correct. Everyone else would be normal. Okay. Yes. Okay. Well, oh you've God. convinced me, Ian. You've convinced me. I would be a god amongst men. <laughs> Good. I'm, I'm glad I was able to sway your opinion. That was I would really, be. I would really be inspired. the best player. Everyone would not understand why I'm so good. I, okay. I, yeah. Okay. Bullet time. Yeah. Good. It'd be torturous, good. though. That's a super good point. It would point. be torturous. It would be so you torturous. Would, you'd have to be very patient. Imagine playing turn-based strategy games. In <laughs> Dude, I, would just, I would need to do something else while I was doing. Like if I played Civ. Oh my god! Ugh, you oh hate it. my Ugh. god! Ugh. Don't right. let me start it. <laughs> this one, this one is for Christine. Okay, so uh, Final Fantasy VIII. The main character's name is Squall. You, are you with me so far? Yes. And he's like the moodiest person since Moody came to Moody Town. <laughs> yeah. Felt sad. So, would you rather have to listen to Squall mope all day or <laughs> have Squall's emotions for one day? Yeah. I'd probably have to go with the former. Cause... So I, I have I have a question about this, a technicality. Yeah, question, yes. Is yes, this she would hear him moping all day, all the time? Or just yes. when she played Final Fantasy VIII? No, no, no. Like Squall would like wander around with you and just complain about everything. <laughs> you know, day. actually, I, I I could probably do that. I could probably listen to him complain. That's kind oh of. Oh, my God. Well, you're friends with Dan, so. I'm friends so... with Dan. <laughs> <laughs> I used to work at Starbucks. I mean, it's kind of my job to just listen to people. To, uh, yeah, you know, I could do that. I could do that. <laughs> okay. Are you equating Got Squall it. to like the Debbie Downer of the video game world? Oh my God, he totally, and the <laughs> only thing that Squall does is like think about how shitty his life is when really he's like the most powerful being in the universe. We just feed Omega Weapon. Uh, yeah, but I gotta <laughs> reload my gun sword again. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Dan, the final one, and this is a really tough one. Okay goes to you would you rather have mario's butt stomp power Ooh. or be able to curl up in a ball like sonic and get yourself to go really fast hmm that's a tough one let's see uh pros and cons pros and cons pros right. let's see pros butt stomp power you know, I could easily super stylish yeah you know, I would stun people you know put them uh yep. make people flat you know, yep. that's always good. Uh, mm-hmm. Building that deck out behind my parents' house would be a lot easier. Wouldn't have to hammer. I'd just have to butt stomp all those nails. <laughs> <laughs> Do you get cons? hurt if you bump stomp? Butt yeah, stomp. I was going to say, cons, is that what no. might hurt for no, a while? No, no, no. Mario's butt stomp power does not hurt Mario. Unless you're jumping onto something like very spiky. So anything oh, that's like like even remotely things. kind of flat, mm. you're good with. And then... Here's, and then, here's, uh, let me give you a let me give you a pro for the sonic speed power. It's much more uh, it's much more utilitarian than butt stomp. Like there's only certain things you can do with butt stomp, but getting places faster could be really helpful. You're but, just not being creative enough. I, but I mean, I feel like I could get. Re- I mean, that, but Sonic's got to get super fucking dizzy. I mean, he's spinning <laughs> around. He's doing flips. like no. you think. But also, no, he's Sonic only get dizzy. no. But Sonic is on like a track. He's on like one road. Imagine if you were trying to pick. Like which direction you're going whenever you're Sonic, like with all the highways and stuff, you'd be fair, like, fair. you'd like run into a whole bunch of crap. That would be or, awful. Or you could carry me around with Sonic's power, and I could tell you where to go because I would have bullet time. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, that'd be great. We would be unstoppable. We would be amazing. You would, oh, you would luck. just guide me very slightly. Okay. So, Sonic's power, but only if Chris gets to be my personal navigation system. <laughs> I was, Dan, I was really hoping that you would pick the Mario butt stomp because I really, really want to do a promo for this episode of you doing the butt stomp. That's what I want. Can like in real life? Stomp? Yeah. Yeah. Can you just hop on, up, here, hold, spin oh, around? Hold on. Let me just, yeah, here, let me, let me just for do all that. Of our, on. Our, right. All of our yeah. listeners right now, he's getting up. Uh. That sounds not like that a butt stomp. That sounds not like Mario does not do that. <laughs> it doesn't sound painful for him. Yeah, that didn't end well. That did not end well. Sorry, everybody. <laughs> Ian, do you want to hear a uh, would you rather? Yeah, sure. Throw one at me, man. Would you rather have Barrett's machine gun arm or 
be forced to carry around Cloud's Buster Sword at all times. <laughs> Ooh. All right. Okay. Um, here is the problem with this one. Is am I cla- like am I cloud like in my strength? Can I just toss Buster Sword around, or is it like I'm me with a well, Buster Sword? Well, are you saying do you look like Cloud and have no, like no. the muscles, the strange deformed muscles that he has, <laughs> 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 or just his inherent and apparently slightly magical strength that he has? I'm saying slightly magical strength. No, dude, okay. I like those 8 bit muscles. <laughs> well, there no, was more like, than 8 bits there. Do I have the magical strength, or or is it just like uh, a heavy ass sword? I don't know about that. I think it. It would be too convenient for you to have to do that. I, that's what I think, too. I think the answer is no. I'm not allowed. I could either carry it around and look cool, but be really sweaty or <laughs> than I normally am. I mean, I think or, eventually you would get strong enough. But at the start, for true. sure, you would not that's be. <laughs> I, and I feel like like Barrett's machine gun arm is just way like it would be really convenient for very few circumstances. You yeah. do live in Los Angeles. That fucking traffic, man. Uh, yeah. But then you'd be or a murderer. If, uh, a murderer, true. But on the other hand, fishing would be really fun. Yes, um, that is true. But you would need to have a license, like a like a concealed <laughs> carry license, I guess. <laughs> is it really concealed, concealed carry? Concealed, <laughs> concealed, concealed carry. I don't know. <laughs> Dude, you could never. You could that never go awkward. certain places. You could never you go to school. Probably couldn't be on a plane. Never That's go into right. a bank. I could never go to Disneyland. Never oh. Disneyland. You couldn't go to Disneyland. I probably couldn't go to Disneyland with a Buster so You never go to Chuck E. Cheese. It. You're done with that. <laughs> You're damn sure you can't go to <laughs> Chuck E. Cheese. <laughs> I, I think I'm going to go with the Buster Sword because even though even though it's a pain in the ass, it's not as much of a pain in the ass as having a gun for a hand. I okay. disagree. I don't know. They both suck. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that is it for the Would You Rather Game Edition. Thanks for listening to us at the Game Brew this week. If you would like a free game, what I would like you to do is send us your would you rather question in gaming to us at the Game Brew for next week's episode. So we may feature your would you rather from gaming. Yeah, in two weeks. Um, You can send that to us at thegamebrew at gmail.com or you can send it to us on Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram at thegamebrew. All right. Well, that's it for our show this week. Say goodbye, everybody. Goodbye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Uh, Goodbye, everybody. (laughs) Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. (laughs) All right. We'll see you later. Have a good couple weeks. Bye. Bye. Yahar. Yar. I think that's a wrap. Oh. Did we oh, miss we, anything? Wait, oh, we re-record? forgot to talk like pirates for the rest of the podcast. Arr. 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 Just everyone do it right now. Yes. Arr. Arr. Ahoy and welcome to the game brew, me matey. <laughs> oh my God. No. We have many brews of games. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this grog, though, is really good. The grog. <laughs> Future Ian, future Ian, this is to be cut out. Open that. How does it open? It has a zipper. Jesus. (laughs) (laughs) Jeez, Dan. What are you talking about? I'm going to go pee. Me too. Not at the same time. Hey, hey, Dan. Dan, yeah, it's, yeah. When you when you get in there, it's down there, and it's 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 the zipper. It's got a zipper. <laughs> <laughs>